Hello, welcome to Palm Sunday Worship, April 5th, 2020 for Trinity Lutheran Church in Bangor, Michigan. Uh, glad you could join us today. Uh, glad for the members of, of Trinity to be able to worship in this way, as well as, as those that happen to be watching this video. Before we get into worship today, uh, they'll be a little bit different. I'm going to ask you to join in with me if you feel comfortable. Um, at certain points in the service, but a little bit of history about Palm Sunday, even before um, the, the idea of, of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on that very first Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday was actually Lamb Selection Sunday. On the 10th day of the month of Nisan, about 1500 BC, each Israelite family during slavery in Egypt was to select a lamb for the Passover, which occurred on the 14th day of Nisan. 1,500 years later, Palm Sunday was the 10th day of Nisan, Lamb Selection Day, when according to Jewish historians, thousands of lambs from Bethlehem were brought into Jerusalem to be selected by families for the Passover meal, which was held on the 14th, or as we know it today, Monday, Thursday. As many were selecting their lambs, Jesus also a lamb from Bethlehem entered through the sheep gate and then the golden gate into Jerusalem, selected by God himself to be the Passover lamb, a sacrifice for the whole world. And on the 14th day of Nisan, Monday, Thursday, when families were eating their Passover lambs, Jesus gave his body and blood to be eaten and drank, drunk. On the 15th day of Nisan, Israel was freed from slavery just as on the 15th day, Good Friday, we were freed from the slavery of sin. Covered by Christ's blood, our sins are passed over. What amazing foreshadowing that was not only set up in the Old Testament, but that Jesus fulfilled on those specific days in the New Testament. And now we see our Lamb the one acceptable sacrifice going into Jerusalem to be that sacrifice for us. We begin this morning by singing hymn number 130, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. There'll be a verse of introduction and then we will join in singing. Join with me in singing if you're comfortable. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang through pillared court and temple. The lovely anthem rang to Jesus who had blessed them souls fall into his breast. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From Olivet they followed mid an exultant crowd. The victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud. The Lord of saints and angels rode on in lowly state, nor scorn that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing for christ is our redeemer the lord of heaven our king 
Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and life and voice, and in His royal presence eternally rejoice. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word that our meditation is on today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel uh, for this Palm Sunday, taken uh, from the first 11 verses of Matthew 21. Please join me in reading. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, telling them, Go to the village ahead of you. Immediately you will find a donkey tied there along with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king comes to you humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their outer clothing on them, and he sat on it. A very large crowd spread their outer clothing on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them out on the road. The crowds who went in front of him and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up asking, Who is this? And the crowds are saying, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So far, God's word. As a Christian, um, I have always loved Palm Sunday. As, I, I, as a child, I always marveled at how Jesus chose to ride into Jerusalem, not on a war horse, not on some fancy chariot, but on the donkey. It always amazed me at how he was willing to do everything to rescue us from our sin. You know, King Jesus is in total control of the situation as he rides into Jerusalem, appearing so meek and mild. As they approach Jerusalem, he tells his disciples, go to the village ahead of you. Immediately you will find a donkey tied there along with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say the Lord needs them. And he will send them at once. Jesus is in total control. He knows that a mother donkey and her colt are tied nearby. He knows when the disciples are going to be asked why they're taking the donkeys. The owner will let them have it if they simply say Jesus needs it. But why did Jesus need the donkey to ride into Jerusalem? Was he tired from several days of walking? trying to get into Jerusalem? No, he needed this animal because he wanted to show us how much he is willing to give himself for us. The humble little donkey, even though it looks small, it doesn't look like it's strong, is, is very capable of taking very heavy loads. But think of it, Jesus is carrying an even greater load as he walks into, or as he rides into Jerusalem on the donkey. As he rides into Jerusalem on the donkey, Jesus is carrying our sin, the people's sin of that day, and the sin of all people up to that time. The prophet Isaiah puts it clearly. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of, of us all. Don't let Jesus' humble appearance deceive you. He bears the heavy burden and load of our sin and the punishment that goes with it. King Jesus is in total control. 
He needs the donkey to fulfill scripture written hundreds of years before. Words that would have served as our first lesson. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Some people, mainly critics, would say that this is kind of confusing. Did Jesus ride in on two donkeys because that's what the disciples brought? But the prophecy was very specific. Jesus was riding in on the colt of the mother's don- of the mother donkey. Why is this important? Because if a prophecy said that it was going to happen, Jesus needed to do it. He needed to accomplish it, even if it seems minor, even if it seems small, and this certainly seems minor and, and small. Take Psalm 22, for example. Psalm 22 predicts uh, precisely that Jesus would be so thirsty that his tongue would stick to the roof of his mouth. Jesus allowed himself to experience such thirst and finally uttered these words from the cross, words that you will think about on Good Friday. A few days from now, I thirst. Simply so scripture would be fulfilled. King Jesus wants us to see how every single word is fulfilled about him. Matthew writes, the disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothing on them, and he sat on it. Another gospel account for Palm Sunday tells us that they had the, 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 the colt had never been ridden before. How could Jesus ride a donkey that had never been ridden before? How did he know that where the colt and its mother would be tied. Jesus wants us to believe that even though he looks poor and looks humble, he is the very Lord God who created this animal along with all the other animals of the world. How amazing that the hands that created the world are now holding on to this animal as he rides into Jerusalem, so he doesn't fall off. Joyfully we proclaim, that's my king and that's my Lord. But not everyone saw Jesus this way. Some said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Is that all Jesus is, just a prophet? Don't you feel like riding or going up to them and and saying, are you kidding me? Have you not heard what he has done? Have you not seen what he has done? Didn't you hear that he just a little bit earlier had risen, had raised Lazarus from the dead? Someday, when Jesus returns in glory, he will come on the clouds of glory. He told the Jewish leaders who falsely condemned him, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. And our second lesson this morning would have pointed out so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now see the large crowd of people coming to welcome Jesus. A very large crowd spread uh, their outer clothing on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them out on the road. See yourself in the crowds on Palm Sunday. Yes, I was there. I heard someone yelling down the street, He is coming! I saw them waving the palm branches, laying their coats on the ground. Someone shouted the words from Psalm 118, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I will never forget it. Hosanna is the Hebrew word 
It really is a complete sentence in English. A sentence that means, Lord, save us. How ironic, huh? Save us. Save us from what? Save us from economic recession? Save us from a virus? In their day, perhaps save us from government oppression? Or bouts of depression? People had seen him raise others from the dead. They had seen him feed 5,000 plus people with just five loaves of bread and, and two fish. They had seen him change water into wine. So why not make us successful and prosperous? When Jesus did not fit their wants, they quickly turned on him in disgust and disdain. Many of these people that were shouting Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest on Palm Sunday were those people that were shouting on Good Friday morning, crucify him, crucify him, ultimately leading Pilate to that sentence of crucifixion. These same people, some of them that were shouting Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, are the same people who are mocking him on the cross. You know, I have talked to people who have been disappointed. Jesus didn't give them what they wanted. I've heard plenty of people in just the past month or so on TV or in other um, interviews or, or, or circumstances say, I, I prayed for healing and it wasn't granted. Maybe they asked for a sign and it simply wasn't given. Maybe they asked for a million dollars to be deposited to their bank account, but it didn't happen. Maybe this has been us at one time or another. Perhaps doubting God, simple promises because he didn't give us what we asked. But hold on a second, because Jesus gives you what you need in life more than you anything else. He saves you from your sin. I've had this thought more than once of what, uh, what would happen if the sin of idolatry is, is simply deeper than worshiping an idol or loving more than I should or, or being too hooked on myself. What if it includes being so preoccupied with what is happening in my life that I forget about the Lord? When you come to know the truth about yourself, you realize that there's nothing you can produce in this body or this life that can ever please God or, or pay for what I do wrong. You know, look at those hands that are, are hanging on to that donkey one more time this morning. These are the hands of God. These are the hands that will be nailed to the cross on Friday. This is the body, the body that lived perfectly where you, you and I can't. This is the body that will be raised to life once again, one week from now. Jesus wanted to ride into Jerusalem, and he wanted to ride lowly on a donkey to assure us this morning or today beyond a doubt that he will do everything necessary to earn our forgiveness and to give that forgiveness to us. I love Palm Sunday, and I know you do too. Thank you, Jesus, for riding into Jerusalem on a donkey so that we never forget how much you love for us and care about us. Amen. And now the, may the peace of our God, which transcends all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Before we join together in prayer, I have a, a special prayer this morning. Uh, that's a, a prayer on behalf of my parents, uh, Jim and Debbie Rice, who are celebrating their 50th, their golden wedding anniversary, uh, actually today. On, on Palm Sunday 2020. Uh, we were actually supposed to be over there 
celebrating with them today. But uh, due to the virus and travel restrictions, uh, we thought it best to uh, stay home um, and we'll celebrate the, with them on a later date. But we offer this prayer uh, of thanksgiving on behalf of them. Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you uh, for the grace by which you have sustained your servants, Jim and Debbie Rice, as they celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary. Accept our heartfelt thanks for all the blessings they have received. As companions on the journey through life, they loved, consoled, and supported each other. But most importantly, they have grown closer to you. By your grace, they have maintained a Christian home and raised their children in the training and instruction of the Lord. They have learned forgiveness and unconditional love from you. Your word has been a lamp to their feet and a light for their path. Keep them committed to each other and to you. Continue to supply their earthly needs according to your will. Give them joy in the years to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I ask you to join me with pray, in praying the words that are on the screen. Lord Jesus, King of Kings, today again we praise you with our hosannas and welcome you as the King of our hearts. Enter in and take full possession of us, body, heart, mind, and soul. As thousands and ten thousands today vow faithfulness to you until death, acknowledging that they have no other Savior, grant that we too join this great host of faithful people to realize both the enormity and bitterness of our sin, as well as the course of redemption to which you committed yourself. We confess, gracious Savior, that we have not been as true to you as you have been to us. Other interests have placed themselves above you in our thoughts. Have mercy upon us and forgive our sins. Sprinkle us with your blood and wash us clean from the stain of our sin. Strengthen our hearts with the assurance of our adoption and transform us according to your image by the daily renewing of our baptism. Preserve us in faith until the end of days that we may behold you in glory forevermore. Hear our cry, King of our hearts and Savior of our souls. Amen. We continue by singing hymn number 133, Ride on, ride on in majesty. There'll be a verse of introduction, and then we'll join together in singing. Ride on, ride on in majesty, hark all the tribes, Hosanna cry, O Savior, meek, pursue your road, with palms and scattered garments strown. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, your triumphs now begin. Poor captive death and conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty. The angel armies of the sky. Look down with sad and wondering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty. Your last and fiercest strife is nigh. The Father on his sapphire throne awaits his own anointed son. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. 
bow your meek head to mortal pain, then take, O Christ, your power and reign. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Certainly different celebrating and starting Holy Week in, in this way. Uh, I'd much rather be in worship uh, with palm branches waving um, and, and joining you all in those wonderful Palm Sunday hymns. Uh, but it's wonderful that we can worship together uh, in this way and, and through this means. Uh, certainly encourage you to keep a lookout for uh, all the Holy Week devotions uh, that will be coming to you and your mailbox, uh, inbox uh, this, this coming week and, and the services as well. As we continue to follow our Savior to the cross and to the empty tomb and, and what a joy it is uh, to know that, that despite not being able to gather together that, that, that Jesus is still that king who rode into Jerusalem, that he's still that king that went to the cross to suffer and die, and that he's still that king who is victorious and gives that victory over to us. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that you are well and healthy, and I pray that uh, you tune in uh, this week and join us in, in those devotions and services. God's blessings. See you tomorrow.